Oh, this is this looks like this is something to mine. Yeah, really excited. I think the fact that we've got a full summer of cricket to look forward to is amazing, obviously, with what we had last year. Um, and yeah, the 100 is going to be a big part of our summer, which is great. I think the fact that the first game is going to be here, it's going to be a women's game. Uh, all eyes are going to be on the match, hopefully, and, and hopefully lots of people will come out and support. So, yeah, super excited to, to obviously get going. It feels like it's been a, a long old build up, uh, and it feels like the the build-up's been even bigger, obviously, because it's been delayed a year. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to getting out there and seeing how the competition goes. Yeah, well, I think we're just about to, to start getting back into training. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was very different. I, I think the unknown was, was really tough last year. Obviously, a lot of people were struggling all over the world. But um, just the unknown of, of not knowing what you're training for, what you're preparing for, and the uncertainty was, was quite hard to deal with, I think, for the... For the team, um, but yeah, now that there's a packed schedule, uh, obviously a huge year for us as an England team next year. I think it's it's just yeah really exciting, and I think the fact that women's cricket was pushed a little bit to the back burner um, with COVID last year, I think hopefully now it's, it's been pushed forward and people really support it, and us as players can go and, and play really exciting cricket and put on a show. Yeah, it's huge. I think you've seen in all the um, branding and uh, the publicity around the tournament that it's men and women's cricket on the same pedestal and sort of um, one club, two teams sort of mentality, which is, is really great to see. Uh, and it's, it's huge for the women's game. It's going to take it to a new audience, hopefully, and people will, will come out and support it. And um, yeah, it's, it's just great, isn't it? I, I think you, you do see a real difference. I think when you're a kid, if you, you turn on the telly and you see this brand new competition and it's women's cricket, it's men's cricket, it just changes those perceptions of, of what cricket is and, and who it's for. And I certainly would have loved it when I was growing up and didn't have that. So. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant news. Yeah, I'm delighted that the girls have gone so well. It's, it's really pleasing to see. That's what we want those girls to do, to go in and win games of cricket for their, for their clubs and, and put in really strong performances. And uh, yeah, selection's going to be quite tough. We, we meet up next week for the Test match uh, and obviously the ODI and, and T20 series coming up as well. And great to, to see that India are going to land in the country tomorrow, which has, has been hard work. So kudos to everyone that, that's made that happen. Um, but yeah, hugely excited obviously to play a test match as well um, it's such a rare event in our calendar and one that's huge for us as players we love playing red ball cricket um, but yeah great to see the girls performing well and hopefully uh, we can continue those performances against India to be honest it's quite tough because we, we don't play any domestic red ball cricket or anything like that and, and obviously you're going on one day form more than anything and there's, there's not many stats to go on or anything like that so it's almost a little bit of feel um, who you think has the, the temperament and the technique and the skill to be able to perform in, in Red Bull cricket and a little bit of form I think goes into it as well so yeah it's not easy um, but yeah we'll, we'll sit down um, after the, the round of Rachel Hingo Flint on Saturday and um, sort of come together we had a three day warm up game as well which was rain affected on, on not a particularly great wicket so that didn't help matters too much but um, yeah we'll, I'm sure we'll put together a squad that's going to really challenge and, and really be strong and yeah what event it's going to be at Bristol uh, I think a little bit I think people that have had success in, in Red Bull cricket before can obviously take from that and, and take it into more games but it's two years ago it's, it's tough isn't it things changed so much and that test was obviously with the pink ball under, under lights in Australia in completely different conditions so yeah you take it into account a little bit but um, probably more recent form and, and how batters are going and how you think or who is most likely to have the best success in that game. It was great. I, I think the standards have, have gone up massively. I think you, you saw the, the games, how good they were around the country. They were high scoring, they were good wickets. Um, and yeah, I was loving yesterday. You had Iz, Izzy Wong and Emily Arlott, two good young fast bowlers coming in, bowling quick on a on a pitch with pace and carrying a bit in it. But at Edgebaston, so yeah, it was, it was great. I think it's, it's brilliant. Um, and just pleased to see the England girls go well and, and some of the domestic players really pushing as well, putting their hands up, playing against the, the best players in England and the, the players that they want to take the spots off. So it's really pleasing to see those girls doing well in the domestic setup. And uh, you want to just create as much competition as you can. And I think we're really starting to do that. We're getting a bigger pool of players for England that you can pick from and players that can come in and perform, I think, as well, because they're playing at a really good standard domestically and training all the time, um, which puts them in the best place. So if they do get the call up, they can be successful.